don't tell your kids we have to homeschool because of all the garbage out there and everything else that's happening in the world. Tell your kids that we get to homeschool because it is such a gift. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so excited that you are back with me today. This is actually my first time back sitting in my studio recording after many, many weeks of traveling. And I am so glad to be here with my new friend, Greta Eskridge. She is a familiar name I know to so many of you, but this is my first time getting to actually meet her in person. And this is so much fun. We are gonna be talking about adventure this week and about getting our kids outside and about um, maybe not even outside. Sometimes we need to be inside. We can have adventures inside as well, but just exploring God's amazing creation. She has just written a book called 100 Days of Adventure. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And she's just got so many great fun tips for you. But before we get into our conversation, I want to thank our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great math curriculum, visit ctcmath.com and check them out. Summertime is a great time for you to do that. And if you didn't know, we have a new podcast called Homeschool Insights. And Homeschool Insights mm-hmm. is it's a it's like just a shot in the arm of homeschool encouragement, 10 minutes or less, and you can visit us there. But uh, CTC Math is the sole sponsor of that new podcast that we have as well. So check it out, um, ctcmath.com and Homeschool Insights. We will put links to both of those in the show notes. Greta Eskridge, welcome to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am thrilled to have you with me this week. Thanks. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. Well, tell us, tell us about you. Uh, For those who do not follow, I know you've got you know, lots and lots and lots of followers. But for those who may not be familiar with you, tell us who you are and about your family and what you do. Okay, well, um, I am a second generation homeschooler. So I was homeschooled from fourth grade all the way through high school graduation. And then when my husband and I started having kids, we knew we wanted to homeschool. So we've been homeschooling our kids from the beginning. We have four of them and they range in age from 18 down to 11. And our oldest is just about ready to graduate. He'll graduate next week. And so we'll have our first homeschool graduate. And we are um, a family that just loves creativity. My husband's an artist and I'm a writer. And we have four kids who love art. We love to be outside and uh, we love to go to the beach visit the tide pools, go hiking, backpacking. Um, and we love books. So we're just um, a busy family with a lot going on, but we are so happy to be part of um, just the homeschool community at home where we live and then part of the bigger homeschool community because it's been such a wonderful gift to all of us. Yeah, I love that. It is absolutely a gift. Um you know, I, I, I saw a meme the other day on Facebook and it said, and this have, has to do with church, but I think it applies to homeschooling as well. It said, don't tell your kids that they have to go to church. Tell them that they get to go to church. Mm-hmm. And I think with homeschooling as well, you know, don't tell your kids we have to homeschool because of all the garbage out there and everything yeah. else that's happening in the world. Tell your kids that we get to homeschool because it is such a gift. It is such a yes. privilege that we have to be able to spend time with our kids. And as we spend time with them, we need adventure. We need mm-hmm. exciting and fun things to do because yeah. we can, I, I know for myself, um, I can often find myself just getting kind of into the boring, mundane day to day, you know, let's, you know, read our books, which that's fun. I mean, I, we love reading, but you know, let's do all the reading and then let's do all the other things that come along with it. And sometimes we forget to have fun yeah. and I have to remind myself like, okay, life can and should be fun, especially for our yeah. kids and learning should be fun and God's creation is fun. And so just exploring everything that is around us in light of God as creator is a fun thing. And so I know you talk about that, you write about that. So I kind of like walk us through this world of um, exploring and adventure and how we can do this with our kids and and, and I want to talk about it kind of through, I, I know in your book, you go through the four seasons but I want to talk about it through the summer. And then once we get into the school year, what this can look like for us. Yeah. Um, I think that what you said about sometimes we get sort of stuck in this world of, of the things that I have to get done, right. Our, our checklist and we got to get through the math book by May and we've got to make sure we've done all the chores and um, we've managed 
to work through everything on our curriculum list. And, um, and all of those things are important, but when, um, what I have found is when those become the most important thing, then I, I've actually lost sight of what is the most important thing, which for me is connecting with my kids. Mm. And there's lots of different ways to cultivate connection in a family, but what our family has really um, found has been a great connecting tool is adventure. And so mm. I always say that um, adventure is not the destination. Connection is the destination, um, but adventure gets us there. And uh-huh. so what we, I, I distinctly remember my kids were little. I had a uh, five, a three and a one-year-old. And I thought I am getting lost in the mundane mm-hmm. of sweeping up crumbs after <laughs> meals and picking up the toys over and over again and making sure they get down for naps and um, just I, I was losing sight of my joy in my kids because I thought I have to get these things accomplished every day. And I, and I thought, what can I do to really cultivate that joy, cultivate the, um, this fun with them. And so that I delight in my, in my kids. And I don't just think of them as a task that, um, that I have to do every day. Right. My children, I didn't want them to be something that I had to, um, you know, like things that I had to get done with them or for them, but I wanted to love being with them. Yeah. And so that's when I started intentionally adventuring with them. Like every week I made a commitment every week we would have an adventure. And when they were little, they were small adventures, um, just a trip to the like pet store to look at the aquariums and the birds. That was an adventure when they were little and we were learning. It was part of our schoolwork because of course to a kid, the whole world is their classroom, right? right. Um, and then, you know, going for a walk at a nature center, um, that would be another adventure. And we would learn while we were there, um, reading books together and learning through our books. Stories are wonderful places to have adventures together, going to museums, all these different things that were small activities, but they were intentional time where I focused really on spending time with them, being with them, delighting in them. And that just grew and grew. And here we are like 13 years later, and we've been doing it every week as part of our, um, as part of our school life, but really as a way to cultivate relationship and deep lasting connection. I love that you talk about being intentional about that because I have to be very intentional for some people. I think it's very, um, natural for them to just, uh, be outdoors and explore and, you know, do those things for me. It's not actually, Mm -hmm. I like to have fun. Naturally. I'm, I'm, I like to do fun things, Mm -hmm. but I have to be very intentional about planning things with my girls in order to build, you, you talk about cultivating connection. Um, we have lots of connection and lots of things that we do. But oftentimes I feel Mm -hmm. like, okay, we're connecting through doing the dishes and we're connecting through (laughs) doing laundry. Let's connect by some fun things. Um, So, so let's break this up into summertime. What are some fun things? And you mentioned a few of them, of course, you know, nature hikes and um, things like that. But you, in your book, you have so many fun ideas for all the different seasons. So let's walk through summer because right now is a time when, it's the greatest time. Uh, there are no pressures of homeschooling right. though. Of course you've got the heat depending yeah. on where you live. You know, I know you're in Southern California where it can get really, really hot. I know because mm-hmm. that's where I'm from. Um, but other than the weather and the heat, what are some fun things that we can do in the summertime with our kids to help cultivate relationships with them and get us prepared for the new homeschool year? Yeah. Um, so in, in my book, hundred days of adventure there, it's divided by season. So for summer, there are 25 adventures for summer. And, um, some of them are things like, like make some more as well. Everybody likes to make some more in summer. So how can you make that more adventurous? Well, I suggest trying um, new recipes for some more. So, so switch up your toppings, switch up your crackers. Um, don't just opt for the same old, same old. Right. You can even make it a, like a contest and invite they can invite their buddies over and everybody brings a different style of s'more and make it into kind of a, like a taste testing, you know, yeah. um, a little adventure. Um, but also things like making a book nook and that can be great for those hot afternoons when you're like, Oh, we can't go outside this afternoon. It's 107 degrees or whatever, or there's thunderstorms. Cause I know in some places yeah. like thunderstorms are really bad in, um, in the summertime. And so, um, it's not just, a 
a, a special place where the kid goes off to read by himself, but where you get to sit down and read with them. Like picking a, a chapter book that you're going to read over the course of the summer, especially if it's like a series and there's maybe two or three of those books in the series and you read them together as a family in your book nook or while you're taking a road trip like that, mm-hmm. you're adventuring together um, through the story. And then what I think takes it up to the next level, and this is such a fun way for kids to connect not only to the characters in the book they're reading, but with each other, um, the people that they're reading the book with is to have a, a book celebration at the end of reading the book. And so that means that you you could dress up as characters from the book. You could cook food that's in the book. That's always my kids' favorite part is so um, fun. the food. And then um, you have a book discussion. And that could be something you do just with your own family Or it could be something that you do with friends and invite them all to read the same book together and then to have a book celebration. And that's something that you could do as like, you know, at the end of the summer to get ready to jump into school. Uh, It's it's such a fun, unique kind of adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Those are just a few. (laughs) Yeah. Those are a few. There's tons of them. I think you said there's 25 of them. So yeah, yeah, there are tons of them. I didn't see the s'mores one in there though. That's really fun. I I love, I love making s'mores. Um, and, but okay, this is weird. I just said, I love making (laughs) s'mores. I don't actually love (laughs) s'mores because I don't like the graham crackers. I just like the chocolate and the marshmallows. So, so I don't do the graham crackers. That's exactly why I, I, one of the main reasons why I wrote that as one of the adventures, because I don't like graham crackers either. I oh, don't nice. think they taste good. And so no. we, our family started trying to find an alternative. We're like, well, what could we do? So mom likes s'mores. And so we experimented with different ones, like different kinds of cookies and things. Yeah. And um, I have since found my favorite. And so I like s'mores now, but it, it was really fun to try try different kinds of um even different kinds of chocolate like I love Nutella instead of the chocolate bar because it's already nice and melty and you don't bite into that hard um chocolate bar and your cookie breaks and it's just like a big mess so it's pretty fun to try different things another friend she makes hers with lemon curd and and marshmallow instead of chocolate and she says it's super good so oh there's, there's endless opportunities for yeah. creativity. Oh, that's so cool. What is your favorite cookie that you have found? Um, so I like their butter waffle cookies. And so they're, um, they're not super sweet because okay. I don't want it to be super sweet with the chocolate and the marshmallow. <laughs> um, um, they're, and they're buttery and thin. Um, I get them at Trader Joe's, but you can also okay. find them at like cost plus or anything. Oh, Cause my. they're like from. Like, they're not the Trader Joe's Belgium. brand. Um, okay. The Trader Joe's brand I like, but if okay. you, if you they're Belgian style, okay. so if you get them not from Trader Joe's, you have to look in like Cost Plus or someplace where gotcha. they sell cookies from other places. Oh so. my, okay, okay. Well, we we'll- <laughs> didn't know you were going to have a podcast all about some more. About- <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. So our audience knows I do not like to cook, but I do love sugar, <laughs> so I like all things sweet, um, including s'mores without the graham crackers. So I'm going to have to yeah. try that. That sounds amazing. Um, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts, and we say, "This is what you do." step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Greta Eskridge, and this is so fun. I love talking about exploration and all things nature and God's creation. It's just so much fun. Um, But sometimes I know as a mom, I like to lead the way. I like to kind of um, dictate how we're going to do things. Like, you know, we're going to take this trail, we're going to do this thing. And then my girls are like, mom, (laughs) stop it. Um, How, how do you balance out show, showing your kids how to explore nature and creation and allowing them the freedom to just kind of figure it out on their own and and explore on their own. Does that make sense? Is that a weird yeah. question? 
I think it's a great question. And okay. it's actually happened very organically for us because we've been, we've been hiking together almost weekly since they were, my oldest was five. Okay. So when they were all little, they had to stay near me because I didn't want them to get lost. I didn't want them to accidentally, you know, step on, step a, on a snake. Like, <laughs> um, and so they stayed near me and, and the longer we hiked, the more freedom they were allowed. So after a couple of years, they were allowed to be within sight of me as long as I could see them and they could see me. So they could be farther ahead on the trail or farther behind, but we had to be able to see each other. A little later, they had to be within earshot. So we had a, a special call that I could call and if they didn't answer, then they had gone too far. Um, or if they called back and I didn't answer, then they, they knew that they needed to stop. Um, and then now, like I have three, my three teenagers, like they, they go so far on the trail and they hike so fast that, that often I am, you know, the one that's way in the back and catching up with them. But by this, by the time they had the freedom to be able to do that, they had taken first aid classes. They knew they, they would know the trail. So if we were going in a place where we had never hiked together before, they didn't just get to take off. We would study the trail together. We would have a meeting point. So it wasn't, it was a gradual step-by-step step and they earned the privilege of freedom. And, um, now I have to say like for them to be able to lead me on hikes is so much fun that's awesome. because they're the ones that are blazing the trail. And that's, yeah. that was my goal all along, but they had to work their way to it. Yeah. Have you ever had anything happen while hiking or t taking any other kind of adventure where you've needed to that first aid knowledge that you have? We haven't actually, we've had um, plenty of things where, I mean, literally almost stepping on a rattlesnake uh, oh several times, um, but they all know how to react. Um, we've had one time when our group, um, when we always have the rule that you always have to have a buddy. Mm -hmm. We really actually prefer kids to be in groups of three if they're, if they're separate mm -hmm. um, at, at the smallest amount where one kid took off on their own and um, didn't follow the rules and get separated, but oh. we were able to backtrack and find them. Um, but we haven't ever had any major injuries, just, you know, bumps and bruises, uh, several times getting poked by lots of cactuses, oh, no. <laughs> always bring tweezers on a hike, um, ah. because those are good to you. Those are always going to come in handy, yeah. but, but it, it is nice to have, we now have three of our older kids trained in wilderness first aid, which is okay. wonderful because we know that that's going to be um, helpful just to have that like peace of mind. Yeah. Hopefully we never need it, but the peace of mind is great. Yeah. Let's talk about nature journals for just a minute, okay. because I know you talk about that in your book. What exactly is a nature journal and how okay. do you use it? Because it doesn't even have to be on a hike, right? I mean, like you mm -hmm. could use it in your backyard. Totally. Yeah. Nature journals are really fun. Um, and I, there are all kinds of different approaches to nature journaling. Some people uh, are really specific. They only want a nature journal to have art that the kid has drawn um, or painted in them. Some people are more open. They're like, hey, you could take a photograph and tape it in there. Your nature journal could be just like you said, like drawings of things that they find or photographs of things they find in the backyard. Um, writing about a description, let's say you discover, you know, a new bug in your backyard. What we always do is we like use it as an opportunity to learn mm -hmm. about something new that we've seen and then write, learn about that. Like look it up in a field guide, look it up on online. Um, find a few interesting pieces of information, write those down in the journal, along with a drawing of the flower or the bug or the tree or whatever it is. Um, so it's kind of a record of our hikes and our explorations mm -hmm. and our discoveries. Um, but it's also a, like kind of our own personal field guide of the various yeah. things we've discovered along the way. It's so much more fun than just reading about things in a book you know, the different trees and the different bugs and critters mm -hmm. and animals and everything that we see, even, um, you know, where, where we live, we have a trail path that goes right behind our house. And so it's fun. We get to watch people walk on the trail all the time. And where 
wherever there's mud, oftentimes we'll see animal, you know, mm-hmm. pawprints. And, and yeah. so we're always looking at it. We're trying to identify like, what kind of animal is that one? And, um, and it's fascinating to realize how many, because di- they're typically animals we don't see during the day, mm-hmm. but I think at nighttime is when they come out. Yes, and, for sure. Uh, and so it's fun to just try to identify the different prints that we see. Yeah. yeah. That's actually reminds me of another really fun summer activity is to go on a night hike because oh, when yeah. you go on a night hike, it, you're going to possibly encounter animals that you wouldn't encounter normally during the day, but also you're just, your senses are you're interacting with the trail and with nature in a different way and using Mm -hmm. your senses differently because you can't see as well. And ideally you aren't hiking with a headlamp because that limits your vision. Instead you're using like a headlamp maybe that has a red light. So it gives you just a little bit of light to see the trail, but it change it still allows you to see everything else or if you want a really bright moonlit night when there's a full moon, you don't even have to use a headlamp or a red light. And that is just the best. It's so, it's just getting outside of that, how you do things normally. Yeah. That just helps us. Like it shakes us up, right? Yeah. We're, we're just like, oh yeah, we we always do this. We're used to hiking. And then all of a sudden you're hiking in the dark and things are different. And that is so engaging and it's yeah. so memorable. Yeah. So fun for kids. And like you said, it's just a great way to cultivate relationships and connections yes, with our kids and, exactly. and making memories that they will not forget. So we're out of time for this episode. We're going to come back on Wednesday. We're going to continue talking about all things nature and exploration, talking about um, your new book, 100 Days of Adventure. Here's the book here for those of you watching. Um, it's nature activities, creative projects, and field trips for every season. And you guys, there are so many good ideas in here. And it's not just for the outdoorsy person. Yeah. I I aspire to be an outdoorsy person. Um, <laughs> unlike Avanella, who is a huge outdoorsy person, and she cannot handle being within, you know, the confines of her four walls mm-hmm. of her home. Um, you know, I, I really do love being outside, but I have to force myself to be out there. And um, so anyway, thank you for your book. Where can people find out more about you? You can visit me on my website, which is GretaEskridge.com. I have a blog there and you can see articles about all the things that I'm passionate about, homeschooling and adventuring and um, creating connection in a disconnected world. And you can also find me on Instagram. My handle there is Ma and Pa Modern, or you could just look up Greta Eskridge and I'll pop up. But that's a place where I'm really active and um, always ready to answer your DMs and share my life with you. You mm-hmm. can find my book at like Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, Walmart, uh, Sam's Club this summer. It's oh, everywhere. Wow. So you can find it um, when you're out picking up groceries. Yeah, so cool. Or you can just click on the notes for this podcast and we will have there a link in there as well. Yes. Did you guys know, by the way, for those of you listening or watching, did you know that when we put links in for books or movies or whatever the recommendation is typically, Um, those links actually go back to help support the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry. We, We use affiliate links for a lot of this stuff, not for everything, but for a lot of it, we use an affiliate link. And, and so whenever you purchase a book, if you do it through the show notes, that does help directly to support the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry. So, um, so we encourage you to do that. That is a huge blessing to us. And if you want another way to support the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry, go to our website, schoolhouserocked.com. You can click on the donate here button and you can always send a donation. It could be a monthly donation or a one-time donation in that. That helps us continue doing what we do to support you and encourage the homeschool community. Um, thank you guys for listening today. We will be back with you on Wednesday. Thank you, Greta, for being with me today. And we'll see you back then. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. We know that we are called to put on the armor of God. So we are teaching our children to be salt and light in the world, but we're not putting our children out onto the front lines of the battle until they're ready. We need to look at our children and realize they can't be salt till they've got salt. And if the salt's contaminated, then it's no good for anything. That's what the scripture says. And they have to remember that because of our sin nature, it's more likely the culture will influence our children rather than the children the culture. So how can we send them out into the world until we have prepared them? You don't send a knight out to fight until he's prepared with all the armor that he needs. So the front lines really in the culture right now, what is up for grabs in the culture? It's truth. 
truth is what's in the crosshairs right now. And until our children are steeped in truth, until they know truth, until they can defend truth, we would never put an, a defenseless child out on the front lines. And education is a frontline battle. It is not a sideline battle. It's not something that's happening in the periphery of our lives. This is happening in the culture in real time. This is the front line of the culture. This is where the battle for truth is being fought and it is where the battle for truth is being lost. And so we do not want our children out on the front lines. We are training our children to go out onto the front lines. And so to me, when we talk about salt and light, I say, let's put the people out on the front lines who are trained and ready for battle.